Good morning guys, welcome back. Um, here we've got an interesting mixer that we're going to be doing. Um, this is uh, this is the mixer was sent in by Lucy. She's also the one that sent in the um, uh, Magic Made Model C that we did. And this is a Manning Bowman. I'm not sure if I can find a model number or read a model number on this tag here. Um, I don't think it has a model number, but she did send in this this paper here that shows an ad for it right there. It's called the Kitchen Mixer. And this thing actually has, um, she, she has all the bowls for this. She's got, you know, the large and the small bowl and the juicer for it. Uh, a turntable wasn't sent with this. I'm assuming the turntable is probably stainless or, or chrome. But um, she has all the bowls for this. And the interesting thing is they are, um, uh, they're blue. Uh, the the Challenge Blue that, that was made by McKee. They also made the Jade the Jadeite. Um, they also made you know the custard color, which was Seville Yellow, and they made the Challenge Blue, which is a really hard to find color in anything. It's hard to find any of that stuff in the blue. But she has all the bowls and juicer for this, so I can't wait to see pictures of it when it's done. So to match the bowls, this is the color that this machine is going to go. It's it's not going to be two tone or three tone or whatever this is now it's going to be this color right here which is called Bonnie Sue Blue and it's a really cool looking blue and I think it is going to go really good with those bowls and it's going to have you know the chrome accents and the, the black on it and stuff so um, I'm not going to plug this in to see if it runs because as you can tell that would be that would be pretty stupid to, to go ahead and plug this in so yeah, I'm definitely not doing that so I have no idea if it runs or not I think uh, you know, knowing the way, the way all this stuff is built, and the way yet to find anything that in the end doesn't run. You know, that's been this old. I mean, this is, you know, you're probably talking, I don't know, late, late 20s, early 30s for this here. So it's quite old, and uh, I'm on the bet that it will still run. Um, let me show you a couple other things about this quick, too. Uh, these beaters, you gotta loosen up the screw here to pull your beaters out. You know, and the beaters, they're connected, but one thing I did notice about them is you can pop them right out for washing, which would be nice sometimes for like the Hamilton Beach, you know, but they don't have it. These got a little spring loaded clip on here that secures it in. These go in a pin on the bottom and just snap your beaters in. All on there, you can attach them, and this can go upside down like this, or like that. And I assume this is how you operate the juicer, probably with it down on the lower one. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but you know, I'd have to actually see, you know, see it in use and stuff. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead. And we're gonna start taking this apart here, and this is. You know, obviously this is the first one that I've seen like this. So I'll probably never see another one either. So it's going to be interesting digging into here. I'm going to take these brush caps out now. Let's see what our brushes have in store for us. These have really interesting brush caps too. You see, it? Whoops. they're tiny, tiny little brush caps. And it looks like they may have tiny little brushes too. And this one doesn't seem to want to come out very easily. So we may wait on that. Maybe we can get this one here out. And this one looks like it's got a little chip off the bottom of the cap there. Okay spring came off, but the brush is still in there, so I have no idea what the brushes look like at this point. Um, we'll have to, uh, you know, wait till we get inside of here and take a look and see. But this top section here is screwed on, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to see if I can just pull this top part right off now that we got the brushes out. Of course, I can't get anything into these screwdriver slots. They do seem to have a little bit of crud in them. That's got little 
silver screws, so two of them look pretty rusted. Uh, I'll have to go ahead and see if we can shine these up. But yeah, these screw heads are just packed full of crud. It's amazing though, overall, if you look at like the, the metal parts on here, they're all in really good shape, like the chrome, the shiny bits, in surprisingly good shape, aside from two of these screws here. Holders, I just can't see it yet. Okay, well, there's a broken wire on this one. Let me see if I can see how these clips are held on here. Right, it appears to be just a little U shaped clip. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so we got this part off. That's what the brush holder clips look like. Tiny little things. But yeah, this wire's broken off there, so we're going to have to reattach that. This one may, uh, maybe, you know, a little bit of work. There's a lot of carbon and goo built up here, but the brushes actually don't look bad. I think they just got a lot of, a lot of stuff built up on them. You know, around the, the part that's sticking out, which is why we can't, you know, we're having a hard time uh, trying to pull them out. Matter of fact, this one doesn't want to pull out at all. So, we're going to push it through instead. And there's definitely a ridge on there. And it's probably just a combination of oil, flour, carbon. Um, at this point I don't see what's holding the brush holders in here. So that's something I'm going to have to look at because I'm going to have to get these brush holders out of here. And I wonder if this metal part on the top here pops off too because there's a bushing in there I want to see if I can get the bushing out and also get this metal cap off the top there so we'll look at that in a little bit um, alright here's the armature it doesn't turn very free at all Definitely binding up, but it is really crun crunchy, crunchy looking in there. Uh, not sure. You know, if I can just take those screws out and pull the whole top section off. There's two big screws on the top there. Let me get the speed control knob off. in good shape. Yeah, I've never uh, actually seen a Manning Bowman mixer before. Um, I've seen the fans. I've worked on a couple of the fans. And I know they did have some different styles of mixers, but this one is definitely very cool. Here's, I should be able to just separate this. There's a little tiny chip on the bottom of the handle right there. How that would get chipped there is beyond me, but 
You never know the things these you know, old machines have been through. Alright, that's what locks your beaters in. And these little knurled pieces here are screwed on the bottom of the beater shafts. Oh, and this one's reverse threaded. So, they're going to have to go back on, you know, left side, right side. And it looks like there may be a little wick or something on there. Yep, little tiny ones. Saturated with oil, though. Alright, now, I think this ought to just separate not positive I'm trying to determine how this handle comes off I thought maybe it was screwed from the inside but I do see a screw here See if we can get it to pop loose. It's a weird angle to to get in there on it. Not sure if there's maybe like a nut on the other side. Like I said, this is all a mystery to me. I would have assumed this handle had two screws going from the other side, but. be something on the other side there. Alright, now let's continue to try to separate this. Alright, well we got it loose, but it feels like it's Catching on something still. It'll be interesting to see how this gearbox and everything ties into the to the worm gear. And I can see the cord in there is just crumbling away. Alright, I guess I was under the impression the field coil was going to stay in this part here, but nope. Alright. So now you can kind of kind of see what's going on here. I'm not sure how this cord got hooked on here. So, you know, how you hook this cord up on here, it's uh, really not much room. I think... Uh, you know, you can hook your cord up and pull it through, but it's just crusted onto here, so it's not going to pull through. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to cut the cord. Alright, and you can see here's your leads for the cord. This is the one that goes down to the switch, and that's awful crusty right there. And this one goes to the field coil. This one is the other brush holder, and then the brush holder that broke, now these both go to, you see how these are just a little thin wire in there with a coating on it that goes to the speed control on it, um, and then this is the one that broke off that went to the other brush holder, so this one's going to have to get hooked back up right into the field coil there. So that's going to be a little bit of work. Yeah, this thing is uh, definitely interesting. You can see this turns a little bit freer now. Alright, I think what I want to do is get this, pull this whole field coil assembly off of here now. Um, there's a couple nuts on here that are going to have to come off. 
it has it needs a lot of wiring on it the wiring on here is just crumbling apart so we're probably going to take everything right back to the field coil and just run new leads out even to the switch I think I don't know I'll have to look at those closely but there's you can see how much insulation is coming back on here and how much bare wire is exposed there I mean granted it's not touching anything metal but um, this insulation doesn't look the greatest and it's touching each other so yeah this one's going to need quite a bit of electrical work well, I think that just you know shows its age also some electronic cleaner too. I mean it's it's kind of crusty. Alright, one nut. And there's the other nut. Alright. It looks like this field coil should just slide right off these studs here, but It's not budging. I'm give it a little head start here. these to push it up a little bit. Wow. All right. Time for a different, different plan of action here. have to use these nuts to run this field coil off those studs. There we go. Yeah, see there. Now we can get the whole field coil off. Now it's going to have to be cleaned up and like I said, extensively rewired because these wires are are just in extremely bad shape. You know, one's already busted off. So, so yeah, we'll we'll work on that. Now, let's see if we can get this armature out of here. It's turning a little better now that I've been uh, still. You can still feel it get tight in some spots, but it, but it is feeling better. Um, I'm not sure. I have to take this plate off first. I mean, there's a couple screws here. Like I said, this is this is all new to me, so this is interesting to you know figure out how it, how it's held together and how does it come apart. I mean, obviously, it wasn't meant to be very easily serviceable. Yeah, those screws didn't really seem to do anything. Is there a third one that's just missing? Looks like this armature should come out, but it's stuck in the bushing. So I'll have to get that off and get that cleaned up. Uh, the armature itself seems really good. It's weird. You can see the 
the brushes seem to be riding right at the very top of it instead of in the center of it. And it looks like this gear rode right here. And then you've got your gears down here for the for the shafts. Looks like there's a nylon gear and a metal gear. So let's go ahead and pop these out. There's really not much to these. They're probably the smallest beater shafts ever. And that right there is the bottom of the gearbox. So I'll have to see if these bushings here will come out or not. I'm not sure. We'll get everything all degreased and clean up the grease and it looks just horrid. Alright, let's look inside here. And say, yeah, I think this is the way the cord was supposed to pull through. You know, that way you can have it, you know, everything down here to hook up your cord and then start pulling everything through. Um, but of course that wasn't going to happen with everything being so hard and crusty. Um, this screw right here, boy they didn't make these screws easy to get to. But there's another screw for the handle here, it looks like you just loosen it up. And then it, so maybe I loosen up a little bit more. It looks like I just slide the handle up and it'll pop out. It's like a keyed, a keyed slot here for it. There, and there's a handle. Alright, this is uh, just about ready to go. I gotta get the rivets off, you know, for the uh, badge on there. And for this part here, too, it looks like. So we'll get to that later. Let's take our little knob off here. This is the one that locks the beater on that little part there. And there's a pin right here that's got to get driven out. And it looks kind of rusty, but let's see. Rusty enough. There we go. You see, this is all cast iron here. This whole thing, and that right there obviously looks like your height adjuster. Yeah, that'd be the height adjustment. And it looks like this is uh, just pressed into there. So what I'll do is I'll end up heating this up and see if I can just get that out, or it should come right out. Now on the base, let me see what's going on with our feet. There's a little adjuster here too, but there's not here for, for the turntable, so that's kind of weird. Um, and this, I can see if I can get this out once this is heated up as well. But I do want to see what's going on with the feet. It looks like they're probably just rubber slipped over, you know, like pins. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You got, you know, pins driven in here, you know, and then the center part of your rubber uh, just slips over it. Of course, these feet are long gone. I mean, they don't even resemble feet anymore. They look like they've been melted. from a few parts this one here is ready to go uh, get taken apart we'll get you know these parts degreased um, we'll heat it up and get the rest of our other parts off of here that got to come off I got to figure out how to get this and the brush caps out of here um, I'm not not sure how they're how everything's attached in here yet but uh you know we'll work on it um, <coughs> and we got you know like I said a lot of rewiring to do on here you know and a lot of cleaning up we still got to get the armature off this bottom plate here, so I get this bottom plate cleaned up and everything. So yeah, there's quite a bit of work on here to do. Um, but anyways, we're gonna get at it, get it ready to go, and uh, once we get it all powder coated and ready to put back together, we'll come back and 
and uh, take a look at it then. Okay, and I was able to just with a little bit of heat pop this this cap off that went on the top there, and there was an oil wick underneath there, which of course it won't dry, but it's good to know that this thing actually has an oil wick in it. And after doing a little bit more cleanup around here, um, I did find I've got to find a really my I don't know if this screwdriver is small enough. Yeah, it is. There's actually uh, a couple set screws here for these uh, brush holders, so it's nice to know that they did include set screws for these as well just uh, pretty well hidden um, they still aren't won't come out yet but now that I know that they're held in with set screws I should be able to get these brush holders out of there alright I gotta once again thank Brian for uh, sending me this uh, bearing puller here because this actually worked perfect for getting this out now I can see you know what was going on inside there this whole time it was actually the, the race had to be pressed out on here so I actually thought this went through a bushing I didn't realize it went through a bearing so that's good to know now I've got the uh, bearing out and I can check it and it that bearing actually feels good there's no uh, sketchiness on it or anything so it just needs to be lubricated well so that's uh, that's really good to know and this thing worked excellent for that so Brian once again thank you Okay, so here you can get a good idea of what I'm working with. Um, I'd actually take one side of coil out of here, and I'd probably have to do the same with that. But uh, this is the, the lead I got stripped back, the lead that broke off a, of the, um, the clip there. And then this is, of course, where the, um, th this was the cord, and where the cord hooked up to it. So, um, yeah, I just want to give you an idea of what's going on here with this. Mama told me when I was young, come sit beside me, my only son. Listen closely to what I said. If you do this, it'll help you. So. Take your time Don't live too fast Troubles will come They will pass You'll find a woman yeah. You'll find love Don't forget son There's someone up above Simple kind of man, but be something you let me understand. Baby, be simple kind of man, but won't you do this for me, son?
Alright, so we got the old main moment all back together now. Um, this took quite a bit of work to get that together up and running. Um, you know, we had noticed there were some wiring issues in there that had to be taken care of. So, of course, you know, we had to rewire a lot of the, the parts coming out of the motor. You know, both of the brush holders got rewired. Uh, the lead to the... Um, to the uh, field coil it needed a new wire so we had to take those all the way back to the field coils and uh, pull the field coil out you know to rewire that the uh, um, after it was all I got it all back the other one time and, and got it running and it wouldn't run on speed one so I took it apart again and found I had to run a new wire to the uh, speed number one contact on there because that wire was broken they're just real thin wires that come off and, and go down but the other ones seemed good Another thing we had to replace was the the bearing on there, which you know I don't know if you can hear this or not. Um, come on, focus. I don't know if focus has anything to do with sound or not, but yeah, I don't know if you can hear this or not. But it feels like there's like a lot of grit inside this thing when you rotate it. So we pulled that off and re replaced it with a new bearing and. Uh, you know, it was easy enough to match a bearing up, um, and it was replaced with a sealed bearing, so it never needs to be lubricated again. And, uh, you know, we got the gearbox full of grease. Um, got some of the parts on here, you know, chromed up or polished up. You know, even the, um, even the wire uh, protector there, you know. We got a new three-prong cord on it, so it's grounded out. Got the uh, faceplate cleaned up there. Yeah, that came out pretty nice. Um, got the handle cleaned up. Uh, this part right here, I didn't powder coat this or these pieces here because I, you know, you need the clearance for this on there. So I just hit that with some chrome paint. But obviously, you know, the chrome paint don't last a while, especially when you're sliding these on there. You know, but they they still they cleaned up pretty nice. They're not rusty looking anymore. Um, but yeah, um, you got the little knob here to lock it on onto the stand um, you know the knob with the spring which we were able to powder coat chrome the spring on there you know to lock your beaters in and stuff um, but enough of the enough of the talk let's go ahead and turn this on and, and see if this thing runs I speed one which is probably very low power And there you have it. I mean, she runs. You know, surprisingly, I wasn't sure if this thing was going to run or not. Um, when we took it apart, we tested the armature and the... I say we, like there was a bunch of us here doing it. It was me. But um, basically, I tested the, the armature and the fuel coil, and they all tested good. So um did have some issues when we got it back together. It didn't want to run. It would just hum. So I basically took it all apart and realigned everything in there again. Um, it was tricky to uh you know set the screws the the studs that go down into this bottom piece and then set your field coil on there um but i found if i i raised it up a little bit and everything it got that got that and the armature in line you know the coil part of the armature in line with the field coil and then you know when i plugged it in it just turned on and then i found out that speed one didn't work so we did some investigating on that and fixed that wire so now all the speeds work on it and everything so yeah this one is a wrap it came out really nice it's a beautiful shade of blue that's it Bonnie Sue blue on there so yeah we're gonna get this uh, all wiped down I mean I got greasy fingerprints all over it still but we're gonna get it wiped down good and send it on back to Lucy I think she'll be excited to get this one back and I'm excited to see a picture of this with the bowls that came with it so anyways I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and as always we will see you on the next one thanks